So my name is Louise Kenny and I'm the Executive Pro Vice Chancellor of the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences at the University of Liverpool. Um, I'm a medical doctor as well as a scientist and I've spent much of the last 20 years developing uh, predictive and diagnostic medical tests. A year into the pandemic, we now know that um, on average, about one in three people at any one time who have COVID-19 are actually asymptomatic. They have few, if any, symptoms of the virus and are therefore unaware that they are infectious and potentially spreading the disease amongst their close contacts. Um, it's critical that we are able to identify those people because although, although they're not sick, they are still spreading the virus throughout the community. And that's a really important cause of continued community transmission of this virus. Rapid tests and PCR have very different roles to play uh, in combating COVID-19. They're very different tests, they're designed to do different things, but they complement each other perfectly. And I think head-to-head -head comparisons of how they work are, are really unhelpful and, and don't really offer much insight into the significant advantages that each test has. So PCR tests are really sensitive. Um, this means they can be positive, uh, even when the amount of virus is very low at the start of an infection, but critically at the end of the infection, they can be positive for many weeks uh, when the overall viral load is tiny and the person is no longer infectious. Rapid tests are actually designed to pick up only those people who are most infectious. Um, and that's exactly how they work. Um, the test strip reacts when there is a um, plentiful virus uh, on the swab that's been taken from the back of the nose or throat. And recent data suggests they pick up somewhere in the region of 85 to 90% of the most infectious people with coronavirus. So the lateral flow tests, the rapid tests, have um, many special features which make them a really useful tool in combating the virus. Um, firstly, they're really easy to use. Um, they don't require the laboratory, the reagents, the technical staff um, that is required for PCR. And that means they can be carried out in a range of settings, places like schools, universities, care homes and workplaces. Um, secondly, they're really cheap um, and they're very robust and readily available. Um, but thirdly, and I think most critically, uh, they are super fast. Um, the results are available uh, within about 30 minutes in most cases. And speed in the middle of a pandemic is everything. Um, because the rapid tests work to pick up the most infectious people, uh, the people with the most virus who are most infectious and therefore most dangerous to their loved ones and the rest of the community, um, they can do that very, very quickly. And by de detecting those individuals almost immediately and giving an almost immediate result, we can advise them to self-isolate and that enables them to take the right measures to protect their loved ones, protect their community and break chains of transmission. So Liverpool had a very bad first wave of COVID-19. Um, and we came out of that wave slightly slower than the rest of the country and had slightly higher levels of community transmission of COVID even during the summer. And I think it's probably well established now that for that reason, we had a particularly early and very severe second stage. And many people will have seen the really awful scenes on the BBC and elsewhere in the news and media uh, taken inside our ICU in October uh, when the hospital was full and uh, mortality rates rose. And I think it's fair to say at that point, almost everybody in the city knew someone who had been affected by COVID-19. So when we were offered the chance to take part in a pilot of rapid testing, stakeholders across the city immediately said yes. Uh, and since November of last year, we've been able to offer rapid testing to people without symptoms uh, who live or work in Liverpool and the Liverpool city region. And so far, uh, well over half a million people who live in the Liverpool city region have taken part in rapid testing. And as of this morning, we have picked up nearly 14,000 cases of COVID-19. So that's 14,000 people who had the virus, um, were highly infectious, but because they had no symptoms or very few symptoms, they were unaware and they would likely not have been found. Uh, but in each case, they would have gone on to transmit the virus to their loved ones and other members of the community. 
And because they took part in the rapid testing program, we were able to advise them immediately of their status. And they were able to self-isolate, which meant that they could break those chains of transmission, protect their loved ones and protect the rest of the community. And I think for the last few months now, on average, approximately 30% of all cases of COVID-19 that we've picked up in Liverpool have been detected with these rapid tests. And that's an amazing public health intervention. Um, it, 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 absolutely, you can imagine, you can just extrapolate from those 14,000 people, the number of people who's, um, whose lives have been saved because they have not uh, contracted COVID-19. In fact, what we're able to do is detect people who are, who are highly infectious and at risk of passing the disease on. We're able to advise them immediately, which means they can self-isolate and break chains of infection. But I think it's really important to reiterate that a negative test, whether it's a test using PCR or one of the lateral flow rapid devices, uh, should not lead to a change in behaviour. And in particular, it shouldn't mean that you stop washing your hands or socially distancing or wearing a mask or following any of the other national guidelines. Uh, because ultimately, these are the really important public health measures that will enable us to get a handle on this pandemic, combat the virus uh, and move to better times.